mission. I call it a mission here too, but something specifically where do you want to be in a certain period of time, and then work to design uh, to define some measurables, uh, some objectives and strategies and uh, items that you could track your progress towards achieving that mission and that vision, and it helped me uh, greatly as I took over that role of leading the organization. I think you need it in order to assess where you are uh, and what your ideas are for the, the value and impact of that organization and allow you to maybe make changes along the way. Okay. Anybody else want to add to it? Has anybody else worked on, I, I know you have, obviously, mm -hmm. um, on creating a long-range plan? Has anybody else done that at any point? Part of the process. Part of the process, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I, I was going to say, that's been my role mm -hmm. before, is I've been part of the process. I have not run the, um, the creation of a long-range plan, but I have certainly been part of the process. So, um, I'd love to hear your perspective as a branch manager on trends that you see changing um, because I would think that library usage has changed in terms of electronic use and um, being used. I would think that the meeting space at Goochland is so wonderful and it's used a lot, isn't it? I mean, it's a real hub. It's an incredibly useful hub in the center, you know, the location and everything. And just what trends you see um, in terms of, you've been there 24 years, and I'm sure a lot has changed. You know, where you see it, where it's gone from 2000 forward, and where you see it kind of the next five years. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's a lot to think about, but um, I definitely feel like we were going in one direction and then COVID happened and we were very busy with lots of things during that time. Um, we, you know, we stayed open, we served our patrons, we, you know, it was something new all the time. During that time, different um, ways of dealing with that and it seemed like it was constant change and so now we're on the other side of that and we're you know, sort of figuring out what the trends are now. And um, definitely, you know, I see in my statistics that there's more use of digital materials. Um, each month that's a little bit larger portion of my um, circulation. Um, but people are still visiting the library. Um, we still have a lot of use in terms of um, children children's programs, that sort of thing. Then we like, we have been focused on growing that, I think as a system we have. And so, um, so those are things that, that I see and things that we've tried to address over time. Well, I think that with the, um, the solitude and maybe the isolation that <coughs> the increased electronic use encourages, that that to me indicates a, even more of a necessity for a gathering spot, for face-to-face -face interactions and programs and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's so vital. Yeah, I definitely hear from patrons that, um, and not just patrons, but in other areas of my life, that people are, are sort of hungry for, for gathering. the gathering together. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, we've seen that with the kinds of programs adults are interested in, gaming programs, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely think that was a holdover from COVID times and that people are really wanting to do that. And I definitely feel the library is that for people. Yeah, yeah it definitely is a gathering mm -hmm. spot. So. Kelly, you come at it from a perspective of being in the library for a long time two different systems. Is there anything that you've um, seen grow and change as you? Yeah, I started actually an assistant in Florida um, that was this year, 2006. And 
Um, the changes I've seen, a lot of more digital use, but also still a need for physical print materials. Um, I'm one of those that likes physical print more than digital, it's just my preference. Um, so it's nice that we can offer both. And when I got here, um, we had we were doing virtual programming, uh, all virtual until March 2022, I think, for this. And and the trends with that was at first it was that's what everybody was watching, and then I noticed the kids really want it to be like it's really important for them to be in person. So we hardly offer any virtual now because they just weren't watching, they weren't attending, it was just wasn't what they just wanted. Um, and with teens, teens are tricky. <coughs> um, what we <coughs> noticed that is good at um, this system is one of our branches, Mechanicsville has started this teen hangout program and the teen, because Mechanicsville High School is right next door to the Mother Library and they get 20, 30 teens in their, in their balloon. And that seems to be what teens really want nowadays is a place, like she said, to come and talk to each other, to be teenagers, you know. Um, and we, we do programs like crafts and other teen programs, but it seems that they really like the informal congregating type. They can, we have, they have stations of like different activities they can do while they talk to each other. And, um, so that seems to be where teens seem to be going. They seem to like that. And some of the other branches have done them, so it's been good there. And I was in children's services in Henrico. <coughs> and story time was always popular. That's been popular since I've been in libraries. Um, building, STEM, all of that has grown over the years and continues to be something that kids want. So I think programming in general, very important. Obviously, um, and the trends for it, the need for it, still very much so. <clears throat> Anybody else, Christy? Did you want to chime in? Okay. I think related to the idea that libraries are community spaces, um, that that kind of comes with the need to actually have the space to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to do a little bit of benchmarking ahead of this, but um, Henrico has 280,000 square feet of library space. Um, and I think that we have about 75,000 square feet. Um, they are bigger, you know, as a county, but um, I think one of the things that has been, been the trend is that you're not replacing, you know, what you're we're not, right. we're not getting rid of all the bookshelves to put in your library space or your meeting space. Buildings that are being built have space for your books and additional space for different kinds of meetings. I think that was borne out really well for us at the Atley building. Um, in comparison, Mechanicsville, which is you know, 10 years older, um, has some meeting spaces, but not quite the flexibility that Atlee has. Um, you know, a little different idea behind it. Um, and how you look at that, and then I think also you need to look at the communities that you're serving. Um, you kind of have to figure out what that blend is going to be as we move forward. I, I mean, I think all my career people have been saying, yes, you know, there's not going to be books in the future. Mm -hmm. We're still here with books. We still have that. Um, I think that um, generationally that will change. Um, but I think right now we're still serving a lot of people um, that, that like to have the books in hand. Children's, I mean, Janet and Kelly were chosen because of their roles and what they represent in terms of the service. Janet, in terms of the branch operation aspect, which is where we deliver a lot of the services. And Kelly, really, because the children's services um, should be a focus for us. Um, it is, it's a strong service. Um, I'll you know, selflessly say that that's kind of how you're um, getting the customers of tomorrow, <laughs> serving them as children today. 
so that they have a chance to go in to being library users as adults. Um, it's, it's always hard for me to um, imagine anybody in education that thinks that reading isn't important <laughs> to being able to learn new things. Uh, it's clearly a part of um, you know, that part of the educational process. So um, I think, I mean, I, th I think there's, I think it's good that we're getting back together to talk about planning. Um, I think that's probably more important as we move forward. <clears throat> One of the things that has been difficult in the time that I've been here in the planning piece is you know, figuring something out between the, I'm gonna say the smallest of our localities and the largest of our localities who have seemingly very different interests. Um, I don't know that the citizens have different interests, but the government units do, and that has impacted you know, what we have as planning. And that's kind of how we got to the um, most recent version of the plan, just trying to figure out a way to kind of manage expectations for all of the, all of the counties. So there's an opportunity ahead of us, um, and I think that we are trying to still work out some of the world and the service delivery um, post-pandemic um, model. I think, thankfully, our visits have returned, um, are, are returning, but I think that's still an area that is um, one that we would hope to continue to fill. What, what, if any, changes occurred during the pandemic that you would like to continue? Were there any things terms of maybe virtual use? I mean, was there anything good that came out of it that you'd like to keep? Or is it all just trying to get back to where you, know, you started? Well, I'd say curbside. And that's just something that's very much important. I'm still for curbside. We will have to pick up the book out here. By curbside, you mean you bring the book out to them, out to their car? Or? In yeah. our branch, we put it on the cart yeah. outside. Every, every, every oh, branch has it out the cart, touchless. and then we put mm -hmm. it on the cart out. So we check it out for them, gotcha. put it on the cart, and then they pick it up. And that happened, you know, during COVID because when the, when the doors were closed, but we were still serving the patrons. Mm -hmm. okay. And so sometimes people just want to leave the Y and don't want to put their bathing suit, change all their bathing suits, and now they just use curbside service. <laughs> I've always used the box to return it, mm -hmm. but yeah. I haven't. I always come in and just you know, pull it yeah. yourself. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I think for me, I thought more of the virtual programming would stay. Uh -huh. You know, I thought there would be some people who would still prefer to sit in their living room and you know take part in a class or whatever. And um, that has not been as true. No. That they like really to has be not played they out like, to like be that. People mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the one thing we have that would that did still work with that was we had a program every so often with the Master Gardeners, yeah. and so learning about planting and that sort of thing. We did have people that would attend that virtually, still, um, but then the Master Gardeners decided they didn't want to do that anymore, so they would prefer to do it in person. So that's what we did. Interesting that it came from both sides. But yeah. yeah. And, and from what I believe, and I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this, but correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I got here when it was implemented. Mm -hmm. We started at Reed Square, mm -hmm. right? So we started at Reed Square um, 2020 mm -hmm. for summer reading. And it's an <coughs> online platform where people can sign up for summer reading, and we are continuing that as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet that is a good idea. Yeah. So they can sign up for everything online. Yes, summer, for any of our summer reading programs. Yeah, so they can log their books and activities and their bingo. It's very popular. But the kids like, I don't know, the adults like it too, I think. Um, so we will continue that. <coughs> How much interface do we have with the local schools in terms of the library? School particular. I, I communicate with them um, pretty regular, pretty regularly. Every summer, I will 
provide them. Um, we get free posters from the Collaborative Summer Learning Program. That is the theme of summer learning. Um, so we get posters for free from them. And each school gets a copy of the posters that we, they can put up in their schools. And on that poster is a QR code that links to sign up for summer reading. Um, and many of our branches go to the schools whenever they want like an outreach opportunity. It's literacy night. If the staff member's available, they'll go and have a table and they can do applications and come in our services and things like that. The Hanover, <clears throat> the Hanover Library, I can't remember her exact title. She's new this year. And so I was talking to her a little bit about the eclipse because school was going on during the eclipse. So I was like, what's the school, what are their plans? And um, so I talked to her a little bit about that and she just contacted me about summer reading, so. She's referring to the person, I think, that is the coordinator yes. for the school Her name is systems libraries. Yes, it used to be Connie Pipe, but now it's, she retired and now it's Karen Campbell's. I know that a long time ago, when I first came <coughs> forward, we were talking about some of the offerings, or some of the things that we had um, electronically, and I remember that they, you know, there's the possibility of being able to get, you know, 25, 30 copies of a, a book electronically that, you know, a school could use, you know, if the classroom is going to be reading. Um, I, I don't know how much that happened, but, that, you know, that would be wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful offering that we could certainly So, the, uh, I mean, schools. the schools could take advantage of that with individual cards that the students have cards with the public library as well. Our electronic platforms, we don't like we don't buy 25 copies of something generally, and the platforms differ in how they license and is done. Um, so there's, you know, it, it's possible. It's not like a blanket statement. Not okay. what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> we went through a fairly lengthy process while you've been here of um, trying to offer access to the. Content that is in Libby um, to the schools. They have a platform that they market to. Libby is for public libraries and SOA is for schools, school districts. H Hanover and Gushin both do have SOA. They do. They do not. They do not anymore. They do not anymore. Okay. Um, Libby doesn't have it anymore. Gushin did. I don't believe Hanover does anymore. They, they both discontinued. Je Jeff would know for sure, but yeah. I know Gushin. So, so we had but we had quite a, a challenge to kind of reach out to the right people, talk to them about it, get them, you know, get them interested, get them to do it. I think that Gushland and Hanover did eventually. Um, if they're not using SOAR anymore, they probably don't have that access. Um, I'm not 100% on that. Yeah. I do know for sure. Kingy and Queen, I believe, was also. Why did they discontinue the use? Do you know? I'm not sure why Gushland did. It's still on license. Um, oh, it's only for Hanover. So okay, so Hanover. Through Sora. Yeah. But someone had told me that the schools had taken the link, took the URL off of the students. So you have to choose a. Um, the last that I did it, which was just three or four weeks ago, you have to choose um, a collection. So Hanover County Public Schools has ebooks that you can access through Sora, mm -hmm. and or you can do a drop down menu, I think, to come up access to regional library. Okay. And then when that opens, you have to put in a, a library card number, mm -hmm. but um, you can access it. That's great. That sounds simple. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that is simple. If, I mean, my children are in Hanover schools, so it's hard for to know what yeah. <laughs> something else is. So we've but we've tried to we've tried to maintain that. I know there. Hanover schools particularly did ask questions about the um, controlling the content from Libby um, in terms of their curriculum and their collection. But might, they have the controls for that are on their side, not on our side. That might, you know, the relationship with the schools might be a, a good, you know, something to look at for um, future. You know what 
if we're thinking in terms of future places, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I, I'm just, I, like I said, this is more of a brainstorming today. You know, these are these are some of the areas that we might yeah. be able to expand and um, see if there's other ways. And, and that might be a good way of drawing in more people who would then get library cards because, you know, they can you know, work among, you know, between. I think as we look at that, one of the things that I would ask is then we'll have to look at what the resources are that we have to, to work with things. Because, like, in Racco, in Racco Public Library can contact the head of the school libraries right. one to one, even with King and Queen's Arm. We still have four school districts to mm -hmm. meet to interface with. And um, you can say they're just as different as the county governments oh, to try to. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I, I do, I have spoken to all of them. Yeah. Um, so, so we do have a, we kind of have board. a way to go, get in yes. yeah, and yeah. start talking to them. <laughs> and, and I just, you know, I just think it's one of those avenues that we ought to explore. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it doesn't mean that we will end up, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. with something, but I think it would certainly would be. Hope. It's difficult because with Hanover, they have a media coordinator. Right. Goodson is the, I, I believe his role is the main IT coordinator, but he over media. King, and, King, King William is basically the librarian of the school. So it's diff it, they're all different roles, too. So. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they change. So yeah. sometimes I'm like, that's not the same person. I did my list. Yes. We try to um, partner with the schools on the branch level too. Like yeah, the branch is really, you know, going that. into the schools whenever we're invited or when we have something to offer for them. Um, you know, we, we just had an art opening for the schools for all their um, kids mm -hmm. that had done art in, you know, March. And um, we had kids come from the school to do a music presentation as well as do the art and all of that. So, and then we've been to several literacy nights in the schools um, this year. So we, we do try to partner with them as much as possible and let them know about summer reading program and that sort of thing too. Right, right. good, that sounds good. Any other kind of broad band, uh, uh, you know, things that we might be able to look into as we're moving forward as far as groups we can work with or um, you know, ideas that we might want to focus on as far as um, offerings you know, down the road. I, again, this is our, well, the you know, other we're looking at the future. Yeah. So the I other end of the spectrum is the older population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, that's a group that... Excuse me. <laughs> no, I mean, I, hey, I'm right there with you, so I'm not going to say it. But I mean, um, <laughs> are there many programs at the library for the old, older folks? There are. There are a lot of programs that um, older folks take advantage of, book groups. Um, we have yoga once a week. We have... Um, Great yoga teacher. At we have the bridge yes. club. Yes, we at have a bridge club also. There's 30, 40 people yeah. at the bridge club. I'm watching. Wow. But even the people, the, the, like the people that can't get out, they can't get you know, ones that are more housebound. I wonder um, if there's a scenario in which they can get books delivered. Or I don't know. I'm just I'm spitballing here. Yeah, just where the people can have access to books, even if they can't physically get the book. If there's a just a, a group and like an outreach to people who who want to read, who need to read who just can't get to the library kind of thing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. One of the things that I noticed as I was reading through a lot of the different plans is that there are still some, some um, systems that uh, still have a, like a bookmobile. Yeah, and usually that's what that falls into. Yeah, yeah, and I was just wondering if, yeah, that, that's what made me think about mm -hmm. it. Um, and, you know, I know we used to have one, and I, you know, I don't know you know, if that's something that is e is even needed anymore in our system, or if it's viable in our system, or, you know, something that, you know, because there are those folks, and it's not always the el just elderly that can't get, you know, can't get to a, a physical library, but would love to certainly have the advantage of using some of the resources. So, I don't know, I, you know, and again, I, 
I, it was gone before I ever joined the board, so. And we, we, um, we ceased operating the bookmobile because we didn't have the funding to support it. Um, the, like, I, there are lots of good ideas being discussed here, but they all have a, they all have a cost. What was the cost of the bookmobile approximately? Would you say, um, like an annual cost? It, at the time, I believe it was about two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Just to keep it up and running, and and it was the service was divided five days a week. Hanover had two days, and the other counties each had one day. Um, I we looked at that quite a bit. Um, there really there really wasn't a great service model in terms of. We had one vehicle. How long does it take you to get to Gershon's, to West Point, to King and Queen? Mm -hmm. That ate up a lot of your time. There wasn't really a lot of flexibility to um, serve um, new groups. <coughs> um, we didn't have any excess capacity, you know, for that. And um, how was the use when, when the bookmobile did arrive? Not very good. Not very good. Mm -hmm. We looked at the return on that investment, and um, the decision was made to cease operating the bookmobiles and put the money back into the four counties to help support operating the branch, which had better numbers, better return on that investment. Hmm. Okay. So even for that, it just stopped it. We could only stop at a few locations, you know, with our cross long. Yeah. number of branches and everything. It could only stop at a few places. So you, you weren't able to do like homebound visits, that sort of thing. You could just stop a couple locations in you know each county or on each day. And there's so. maybe other approaches to doing a more of a homebound type approach. I, like a local <laughs> book delivery system where you would the really system, I don't, yeah. it's just an idea. I mean, yeah. well, of course it has, looking for right. it. Of course it has cost, but the system I did in Florida, it's called Books by Mail. You can use a, use a library and just, or the media mail. It's in Maryland. Does it? Yeah. Okay. And they, you know, filled out a form and then but I even one see person this. coordinated yeah. it all. So sent mm -hmm. out the books, got the books. Just so. like when you used to like, get your Netflix. And yeah. Stuff by mail, remember that? Right. Yeah, yeah it's just like that. Just like that. Yeah. But they but, would. I mean, them. even reaching out to once again, I'm just this. I'm thinking out loud here. If you reach out to, um, and I use Gushland as the example, but um, just to create kind of a local volunteer delivery system through like Gushland Cares or something. It just seems to me there's people out there who retired folks who love to drive and. You know, be all over something like this. Just a way to get the books out, you know, and get a little interaction with people and just a thought. Sort of like Wheels on Wheels. Kind yeah, of like, almost, yeah. Kind of like Books on Wheels. A partner <laughs> with Wheels on Wheels and yeah. say, when or partner, partner with wheels. wheels on Wheels and say, you know, when yeah, you deliver the that's wheels, a good idea. I like, deliver books I like at the same yeah. time or something. I, I, and again, we're just brainstorming yeah, yeah, at this point. So. You know, another question oh, yeah. I was going to ask. And this is just brainstorming again. Is there any any interest uh, for establishing any new library? And I know I know it, it, there in Goochland that we had a group that was talking about a library in the East End for a while. And I, you know, obviously I know that's a, a big expense for the county itself. It's not just you know certainly isn't just the monkey, but um, I didn't know if that's anything that. You know, has come up in any, you know, in Hanover or King William. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking. It was heavily discussed in King William um, up until January 1 of 2024. The one that changed where they had the, the for, current. For, for a new building there. Okay. okay. Um, I, I mean, I, my sense is that mm -hmm. the, the, that is very cost prohibitive even to serve even in Gushland, <laughs> um, to, to begin that. Um, you have sort of your capital costs. How are you going to do that to have a physical location? And then the staffing is, right. you know, is, is really a challenge. Um, it, 
again, sort of it's different all over, and I guess I, 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 I think it's hard for me to talk about things if they're not somewhat practical. <laughs> um, Goochum still has to proffer money, um, and the, there are, there are, you know, it's like the Netflix machine that you might see outside of Walgreens or Walmart or wherever you are, but there are book vending machines. Mm -hmm. um, their cost has come down. Um, I don't know that they're in the category that I would consider to be cheap, but they probably are accessible. Um, but you need to have, a, you know, models are different. Does it need to be, is it, is it weatherproof or does it need to be inside of conditioned space? You need to be able to have network connectivity to them, um, et cetera. I, I think that those have a, a fairly practical application for our region given you know sort of all of the differences or um, as King and Queen looks at their service model where you know their branch is 40 miles away from their population center it might be a way for them to be able to extend that um, when I worked in North Carolina um, it, there were libraries in the, in the middle of the county and I always sort of joked that they were equally inaccessible, <laughs> didn't serve anybody, um, but we kind of have, you know, not that they didn't serve anybody, but you always, somebody always had to be driving, and, and the region kind of has that with, you know, branches centrally located, but you've got people in both ends that are harder to serve. Um, it's, it seems like it would work um, fairly well to, to look at that. I think that goes with a um, evaluation what is your service model? Where are your locations? Um, you can, we'd, we'd be able to get some GIS data to try to figure out what the average drive time is for citizens as we start to look at that. Um, I think in the past, the, um, the drive in terms of having branches has been done more, sort of more politically. I have somebody in the district that was interested in seeing that service. That to me is the value of having having a plan where you know you, you lay out what your needs are and you um, you work on meeting the needs. Right. Work with your localities to meet the needs. Okay. Um, One of the things when you were talking about the digital or uh, electronic um, programming that. The library currently does or was done specifically during COVID where people were um, forced basically not to go out. Um, and particularly with the elderly population, um, maybe retired people, um, where I'm a history buff. Is there ways that you could use that same mechanism to get people to come to the library and organize some sort of a lecture and make that a presentation out to the community at large. I mean, certainly this region of the country is extremely rich in a lot of history and they can't get to a museum or a place where they might be able to uh, obtain that kind of information. Um, I think they might be very interested in doing something like that. Uh, there's a lot of people that, dosing some people that know a lot of history and try to find a way to share their knowledge uh, in that kind of a process. And I know the, the uh, Historic Society in Goochland is, very, is a very active group. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure Hanover must have something like that. I don't know for sure. Well, I, I mean, I, are you I think you're talking about maybe two different things. Mm -hmm. I heard Mr. Johnson talk about using electronic resources to right. provide What I'm programs. thinking is then we, maybe if we partner with well, somebody like the too. Goochland exactly. Historical Society. The, the, the various organizations yeah. within the area to partner with them and come in and use your uh, facilities mm -hmm. to be able to do something like that. Uh, the Virginia uh, Museum of History and Culture does that and they have somebody come in and do a lecture or they have a book that they've written on something 
is certainly available to the members and they can go to the museum and actually participate in a lecture, but it's also available online. You can actually go in and listen to it online. So it's like a recording? No, it's not recorded, it's, it's live. Recorded. But it'd be live, okay. It would be live. Okay. So, I mean, you could do things like that, and I think that in today's world would be extremely valuable to the, maybe even to anyone. <laughs> but I was just thinking of the, the people you were mentioning bridge, certainly bridge, things like that can be also done digitally rather than in a room. Can you speak a little bit further to that program and what we are doing? I do know we're doing um, what what I might sort of suggest in terms of trying to do things because there, there, there really isn't an idea here that we haven't done, haven't tried to do. Um, and we haven't done the, the book machines, but that's been an idea that's, you know, I've talked to three or four different county administrators in Gucci about trying to do that. Um, every, every time that I've been involved with a community survey, the community will tell you that they want these kinds of programs, and we will offer them, and that attendance is not very good. Um, and I guess some of that is, what's your return on that investment? Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think we would like to see, if, if we saw more than 10 people, we'd probably still be doing those programs, I would guess. The computer, um, like we used to do basic computer, classes for the public. Um, I, 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 can, I can set you up with a number of residents in Hanover who will tell you, yes, we still need to be doing those. And the reason we need to get to doing them is that people, people don't attend. Um, we've tried to do um, like registration to like get people somewhat more invested <laughs> in the idea. They, uh, and they still don't, they still don't. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be considering things anew, and I do think that you'll probably get to the point where you're asking the community. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, I think that some of those some of those programs are probably not quite what people are looking for, um, and I don't you know I'm, I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, I haven't heard any um, you know slam dunk. as an election official and actually having a precinct in the branch and the help with like bringing people in. Or we've talked about the, the area around Atley that was supposed to be developed into the amphitheater outside in one of the initial plans, you know, having an area where you can do a concert or kind of a more community gathering thing. So, I mean, I think big picture using your programming to try and get more people there. I know during summer reading, whenever they do like the touch the reptile or whatever. Yes, we are doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> you get like a line all the way through the parking lot around right. the building and right, so it's like We're those kind of things. Okay, I take it back. There is something that doesn't fail and it's, it's animals. Snake <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Touching the snakes. <laughs> magic. Magic. Magic, yeah. Like um, those kind of things in the summer. <clears throat> so during um, COVID, we implemented hybrid type programs and we started going back in person. And what that was is in person programs that were also live through Zoom or a virtual um, program. And Atlee still currently does a hybrid book club. But the thing with Atlee is they have the technology still to do that. Um, or else you're kind of, and I've done it in Zoom meetings, but it's, they, nobody can hear what everybody else is saying. So, but Atlee still does hybrid programs. I did know, um, there has been some history type programs for adults, but those have all been in person. Um, 
What are the most successful programs and what time of day bring, works best, would you say? Like what, is there anything that people you think want more of that you see in a hunch? Um, it's, it's for kids after school, um, during the summer, it's any time. For families, daytime is fine, but then you have working families that want night programs, weekend programs, and even then it's, I'm a working mom, I would love to go to some of these things, but at home, things happen. Um, we do have Saturday story times for working families. Um, as far as adults, what do you see? I know much more about you guys. Yes. <laughs> well, adults, like I said earlier, um, we've really tried to let the adults guide our programming in the last, um, since post-COVID, I feel like. And what we have seen is that they want to do things where they gather. And it can be a book club, or it can be a gaming situation, or it can be yoga, but they want to come and gather. And so, yes? In interactive, not, not static, not come and see, right. but come interactive. and do. Come and do something. Yes. And yeah, enjoy each other's company at the same time. Is there any kind of outreach to get people to get library cards? That don't have them. Um, I we, we do um, just you know we do many outreach with other like we partner with other organizations to do say National Night Out mm -hmm. or um, the Geek or Geechland Day or things like that where we can have a booth or we can be out front in the library when the parade's going on right in front of us. Right, that's that big kind day of thing. Coming, yeah. Yes, yeah. and. Then we offer people to sign up for library cards and usually, you know, tell them all about our programming and that sort of thing. When do, you get good, do you get good response there? Do people sign up? Um, sometimes they're usually more interested in what programs you have going on and the games you're playing at your outreach table and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, more, we have more kids sign up when we go into the schools probably. Okay. And you know, like if we go to a literacy night or it's worked really well sometimes when the schools will set up everybody in the cafeteria and say, you get a stamp at every table. <laughs> and so then the they come to your yeah. table and they sign up for a library card. Mm -hmm. But you know, it varies. Uh -huh. This, this isn't the stop of ideas. This is just, to, I think we'll go ahead and move on. I think one of the things that I um, wanted to try to do for us before we even got started was to do a little bit of background research into um, some of the plans that other places have put together. Um, and they, I sent you out five of them. I tried to pick out ones that were similar in size and um, it, it, I don't know about you, the, the one that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very different. It surprised me, you know, how different, it, it, but also how similar some of the things are that, that are in them. The one that uh, I think impressed me the most um, as far as layout, and I'm not talking about content at this point, I'm talking strictly, you know, how, how we put some up program or put a long range plan together um, as far as the parts and the pieces, not not the content so much. But I really like the way that the Jefferson Madison region regional library's uh, plan is. It's it's um, seemed to be um, it seemed to be well put together in the sense that it was a workable plan. It was something that once they finished, now they can go back and they they not only had it set out um, by objective, um, but they also had at the end where they put the planning <coughs> checklist by year. You know, and I thought that was great. That you know, because one of the one of the big things, everything that I read as I was going through and doing a lot of research, like I said, I've participated in long range planning, but I have never run it before. So. Um, one of the things that uh, I noted is that they said, you know, you really need to go back every year and 
go through your plan, what you've done, what you need to do, you know, have you met your goals, is there something else you want to change or add or whatever. So, you know, that's something that, you know, we can certainly try to build in. Um, by the time I came on board the library board, we were beyond that because the plan was beyond that. And so we, um, you know, we do need to try to build that into um, what we're doing. As far as the parts and pieces, um, I, I know it's obviously very, very important to have your mission statement and your vision statement. And um, I know we have the mission statement for Pamunkey, which I, I think is a very well done statement. I, I think we, we have very, we can certainly look at that down the road if we feel like we need to. I could not find a vision statement. I looked, but I, I couldn't find one that we had um, specifically stated that our this is what our vision is, and then from that to say this is where we are, this is our mission. Um, and so, and I'm, I'm kind of asking <laughs> if, if it is somewhere. So, um, and then uh, other parts of the plan then to, once you um, developed your mission, then for the five-year plan, you, um, we need to be thinking in terms of um, a few goals. Not, I, I don't want us to do 15 goals. I don't want us to do... That was our comment about that yeah. on the way here. We were like, wow, that first <laughs> goal had up, like 15 it was objectives. Over by the time I yes, got through like, it. Yes. We, we probably need to kind of start a Keep little small simple. and simple yeah. because otherwise be we're going to have to hire... Be simple. You know, another Three five more people <laughs> to, you know, we need to be focused. <laughs> but, but one of the things that you also handed out was that, um, that thing from Iowa State. Yes. Because I think they gave excellent e examples, but uh, certainly yeah. um, they defined those uh, parts of the planning process extremely well. Yeah, and I thought short, so too. Uh, so you could understand what they're trying to do. And when you looked at that uh, one from um, uh, Jefferson, it followed that pretty much. It's just that they were over gold. Yeah, they, they kind of <laughs> over gold some gold. of their yeah some of their their goals. Some of their goals had an awful lot of objectives. You're well, right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I just like when things get very specific <coughs> rather than vague. Mm. I mean, have a goal and then just be very specific about what people need to do to to get to get results, um, and then with evaluation on an annual basis, have we achieved these results? If so, then we move on to the next thing. But that's why just to keep it really clear, really simple, and theoretically attainable. And they were were they the one that? Kept talking about being the double E and the triple E. Okay, the, and I don't know if everybody understood what they were talking about. I was going to ask that question. Okay, she, she asked she me the, the same thing. Okay, there is a. Uh, it's called. It's from the Library of Virginia, and I'm not sure when we were given this, but um, the planning for library excellence. Mm -hmm. And this was this particular version was 2019. I don't know if they have a newer version of that or not. But what they have done like in here, is. pardon? I feel like there is. That's what I was thinking too, but this is this is the, ver the printed version that I had. Um, that they, um, they would give um, a specific, like they, they talked about um, library, the uh, library directors is one category, funding is a category, administration is a category, public relations, human resources, that kind of thing. And then what they did is they've got, if you have done these 10 things, you're at the E level. You're at one, at a one E level. Which is, they define E as essential, right. double E is enhanced, and triple E is exemplary. exemplary. And then you go into, and they, for that same, like under library directors, they had, a, they had 12 things that um, you um, should be doing that would um, get you at the E level. But you can move to the 
um, EE level, if, and then they have eight things here. And I, my interpretation, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong on this, Tom, my interpretation was that you didn't have to have absolutely every single one of these done in the e, double E level. You could be double E on a piece of it, but not double E, you know. You, Do you mean like on the library director, but not on the publicity? No, like under library director, you might still be at an E level for these particular goals, and yet you could move yourself up for one of these into the double E. So now you're starting to move your, your library system up to a higher level, and then the same thing with the triple E level. I think, I mean, I think it actually states in number one that you meet all of the standards of Right, before right, you right. You before you go to the next level, and I think we, you know, we're at the E level. I think on everything, uh, from what I could interpret, and then, um, but it is a goal to try to start moving into the the double E, and then it's the same thing. The library would comply with all the standards on level E and EE in order to start working on the triple E level. And it, so it might be a good exercise to have a session and score us on that. Yeah. Um, the, the square footage is one that starts, I believe, at six tenths of a square foot, which we're not going to get in. Yeah. Um, I, I can tell you that um, at least one of the localities will probably say that, well, they think that they have their own special you know, measurement of that, and they're okay at the You know, sort of asking what is what is your vision? How do you want you know how do you want to do that? I think if we were able to show that we were meeting lots of other outputs, you might argue that yeah we're doing great with five tenths of a square foot, right. but you might not be. So at the February board meeting, you also mentioned a um, something so that I, you did with the Virginia directors, right? So the the Virginia Public Library directors also came up with a sort of grading system. And um, I had gone through and, and read this for that, and I, that was a while ago. I think it had sort of A, B, and C as the lowest level. And I did not feel like I could give us a C, which, you know, there were too many measurements that we just were not making not enough support, and um, be happy to bring that to a session to, 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 to go through. So it's but different than, than this document. It is, okay. it is. Um, and I think if we can get a copy of this, um, and that it, I'm sure it's online. It is, on, I just got it, it's, it's okay. online. Yeah. But yeah. it's still Good. 2019 online. Yeah. Is there a new one? Well, I don't know. You had mentioned there might be. That kind of felt like, I kind of felt like there had been an update. Yeah, I just Googled this. Post, and it and it popped right up. post world, but we can we can get that. Um, <coughs> yeah, just making sure that. Yeah, I mean, it, I could, I mean, I could literally email it to everybody right now, but. I mean, I I've, I've gotten it there yeah. too, but I've only ever. Might be it might be a different thing that they've updated. And yeah, because oh, it's updated. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't I didn't it's study ahead on the update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't want to be cheating. I feel like I've got a lot more goals and objectives than I thought I would. I want to do it. Do what you're trying to say. Um, can I? Yes. Um, I'm looking for so the vision in the current plan. Okay. I believe is what is contained. Library planners created a brand promise, a simple statement of what the library hopes to deliver to customers. The brand promise is inspiring destinations, compelling experiences. To fulfill the brand promise for our customers, the library will customize our service offerings to best focus on the needs of each community. And so we, we did that using three communities of community hub, one stop, and work and play. And that was 
was done in sort of no small part trying to figure out you know, how, how do we serve when we have a, an outlet like Atlet, you know, versus the king and queen branch kind of at opposite ends. Um, the, there's just so many things that are different about them. What is the, like the um, emphasized utilization by the family relationship cluster? So, right, so and we're still using, we still get the service with Image Boy, but um, we provide them with usage measures from our customers. And so they get, they get grouped into different categories of user. Um, they, have these names that sometimes are cutesy, but they're meant to be descriptive. So it's, I'm making this up because I'm not sure. But you, I would consider to be a vegetarian because you've said a number of times that you're not using physical. You're interested in. I'm an audiobook person, but yeah. Yeah, other other people are page turners. They're <laughs> checking out, you know, several books. They generally come weekly or every couple of weeks. Family services are people who are using children's materials and attending children's programs. Like and that's what three the, of the clusters. That okay, so that's what the family relationship cluster is. It's just a descriptive, yes. okay, describing the users. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was that data that helped us to make a measurement with King and Queen to understand, you know, um, quantitatively. receive more service than what the output for the king and queen branch, and indeed most of it was at king, king William branches and mechanics book. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit what the, um, the last time when this was developed, I guess in 2015, what was the process? You just mentioned that you guys had hired somebody to help you with this process. We did. Um, the, we did hire an outside firm to help. The company's name is Orange Boy. Um, they, they do a lot of library marketing. I would say libraries are their focus today. Um, and um, they worked with us, I would say, sort of throughout the long range planning process. We did a fair amount of um, electronic surveying. Um, this is from memory, but I think that we had 2,200 respondents to, wow. our, to our survey. How many? I think it was 2,200. And that was about double um, the number of respondents that the library had from the previous plan. Mm -hmm. And um, a quick aside, I have some stuff, because I think one of the things we want to do is take a look at each King William, Cushing, and Hanover's plan, because our plan is not <coughs> separate from them, we, we need to fit into their plan, and I think you want to look at that language and see how you fit in, but I think King William did something called Blueprint 2041, and I believe that they said they had 600 respondents to their survey, so, um, so we had, we had a, good, a good bit more activity. Um, I believe that we also did public meetings. Those are some of the things sure. I was thinking we might use as tools, yes. Those are, I mean, those are kind of the general ones. Um, the electronic surveying is you know, obviously quite a bit more efficient if you're doing paper surveys. You've got to invest in the time to sort of transcribe the results into whatever your survey is. The, you know, the Gaussian data, if it's someone whose handwriting is like mine. I mean, those are generally the options with that. Um, we we looked at those. We had some ideas of you know where we were going to be headed with things. It it did look at the financial aspect. Um, you know, if if you say that your emphasis is on children's services and you're spending the majority of your funding. 
default services, you've kind of got a balance on that. So we did we did look at that um, as a measure of trends. Um, we did go again. This is kind of from memory, but I I believe we went to all four of the county's board of supervisors. Um, so so in here that you did. Yeah, I I think we went. I want to say we went twice. I think we went on the front end to say this is what we are going to do, and we would appreciate the feedback. That may have been. And then we reported back, went back out, and said this was this was the plan that we've come up with. Yes, uh, sir. Did Orange Boy do the survey for you? Um, they did. All right. Did, did, is there a copy of the instrument? Do we have a copy of the instrument? Probably. And I've been asked to look at the instrument for a while, but probably. And the results mm -hmm. of that instrument? I think it'd be good to look at it. Oh, I do so too. That, so I you do know. Too. <laughs> that was one of the things in the Central Rappahannock um, Long Range Plan. It said they got 366 responses. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's like nothing. Mm -hmm. So to hear you say 2,200, yeah. yeah, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can research that. I'm saying it up front. But I, I, <laughs> that's all right. We're not going to be yeah, done. What, 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 I mean, what, I, what I remember, though, it was double of what we had done before. Yeah. No, that's and I, like think, nice yeah. I think that that is not that far off. And I think that, you know, um, interviews with different groups, too, that, um, you know, I don't know if we want to look at who, you know, potential partners that we, you know, could partner with, the schools, the historic society. I'm, mm -hmm. trying, I'm just, you know, again, just kind of brainstorm around. Um, I think the more input we can get, the better plan, I think, we can come out with, you know, that really serves our communities. And it's, it's going to take some work, I know that. You know, it's not that it's going to be an easy thing to do, but I think, I think it's worth putting the effort into it so that we have a plan that we really can follow as we're, as we're moving along. And you said we still have Orange Boy under contract? Mm -hmm. So we could still go back to them to get them to help us with the survey? Um, yes, I don't know that what we have is, the service that we have is related to the data. Right. So there may be, there may be other charges. Other charges but, for it. Um, yeah. we've, been a, we've been a fairly long time client and Did what when we opened it up in that way, you know, you can open it up to clients that could probably do it at, at the library or they can do it at home or they can do it, you know. In other words, what I'm, I, you know, they, by doing it electronically, it, it helps us keep from having, you know, somebody say, well, I'm going to fill out 10 of these. <laughs> you know, well, so they know that I, yeah, that I really want this. So, I mean, in the past when we did this, we contacted them via email and then the system actually knows whether or not you've yeah. responded because we, I think part of the reason we had the good response was that we were able to send part of these emails to say, dear Ms. Young, maybe you missed our previous message, but we would still <laughs> like you to, like you, to you know, this out. Yeah. Like the doctor's <laughs> office. <laughs> Probably the next step, and this sounds kind of like we're taking steps back, but I think that we ought to look at uh, setting up regular meeting schedules um, for this group. I don't know whether, one of the things that I noticed when I was reading through a lot of the different plans is that, um, and I, I read some that I just read online, but I, um, the ones that I actually printed out, 
too, that they seem to have more people on their committee. Yeah. That's what I was just about to. <laughs> yeah, than we do. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we need to expand. I think we probably do need to expand our committee. Um, you know, this obviously is the core to start. But I think that, uh, you know, and it may be that we expand it for, you know, three months as we're doing this particular piece of it with these folks. And then we can, you know, expand it with another group of people, you know, with, uh, if we're working on something, you know, different type of focus. Um, yeah, after that, it's regional to 12. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I picked up on that. I was like, oh, maybe we need more people to do this. So, we had, yeah. we have 88,000 members, so we'll see. Yeah. yeah. They had a person from Parks and Rec. Uh, the friends of the chair of the Friends of the Library. Yeah, I was thinking Friends of the Library would be good too. Yeah. I think um, Jefferson Madison also wants to get people. I think they have 12 as well. Uh, Jefferson Madison looks like it was all staff and trustees. So, what would be a good number? Because we have how many people? Seven. Seven. <laughs> it's been a long day. Seven. Um, so if we were to get, there how many friends, friends groups? Because I'm not actually on the committee. Yeah, she's not. Okay, she's so how many friends groups do we have? How many friends groups do we have? There are seven. Seven friends groups? Because um, I think they're just a wealth of information. Yeah. I think yeah. those people are very engaged and they they're love the library. The community. And they know the community. And I think that we should have you know, six of us now, we should reach out to, I mean, it's, I hate to say we shouldn't have one from every friends group, but we need to have some representation from the friends groups here. And I'd like to see somebody from one or more schools. I was just going to say, I'd like to see us try to pull in, if we, if we are talking about creating some partnerships, I think it would be good to have, you know, Somebody from Senior Connections kind of thing? Something, yeah, something just, like just that. Just a, a Maybe. wide swath of the community and just to get their thoughts. The, you know, I, I know that an emphasis that I saw in a lot of the plans was on the preschool. And, you know, um, the preschool and, and the children's programs. And so, you know, we, we've talked about schools, but we might want to talk about um, maybe the preschool world. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, having um, a representative or two from, you know, I, I know there's some, having been, when I was at the State Department, we've had several um, organizations, but there are, you know, there's certainly a lot of private pre preschools, too, within our communities. So, so what we could... Pardon? Why do you think Oh, I don't know. experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, No one, we don't have anyone from the community yeah, on the committee, from the trustees, but I didn't know, like, when We just asked for volunteers, remember? That this, is, well, this is who volunteered. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, And well, I agree with you. I agree I, with I, you. I, I think the we question need somebody. Of, like, do we need, do we, are you looking for Does, does King someone? William have a friends group? They do. Okay, we could get, what we, we could do is figure out the number that we think would be a good number of people and then decide how many friends we want, how many school or seniors or whatever. And then people can just say, express the interest, and then we could randomly pick out of a hat or something those people so that we don't expand into a, a group of 25. But yeah, if, we, if we decide we want like 12 people, like Appomattox or whatever, then we could. Um, have it small enough where people will contribute rather than not. And the larger the group, the less yeah. they will. It could become a little, a little difficult. And that's why I think this is almost like the core group. And then, you know, as we're dealing with different aspects, it certainly is a well, place where we need to do like focus groups yeah. of yeah. Right. Right. some of the populations. I think, I mean, stakeholders. I think you're. Your school folks will be hard pressed to participate during the school year yeah. in a day meeting, mm -hmm. and even in an evening summer. meeting. In the summer. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, 
Yeah. It's like that's more of a focus group, group type yeah. thing. Yeah. And then the friends you know, group they can will work. They would definitely yeah. come out and help us. They're yeah. generally at least the one I talked to at that week. They were definitely effusive about the desire to be. Well, our Goochland group is. Yeah, yeah, they're engaged and they know the library, and I think their their opinion is really valuable. I mean, I think that before we start to pull in other people, that this committee needs to have kind of a direction and an idea of how they want to move forward. And some of those things with friends can also be, like Mr. Shepard said, like a, a target group yeah. situation where, and, it, and for Hanover, as I said at the last meeting, we've kind of connected ourselves to a friend group or tried to, we're working on that. So like we could be that connection point to that friends group and you know, communicate and get input. So, okay, so when we get together next time, should we have it be a focus group to get more input? I, I'd or rather this group be this group for a little bit longer and, and, then and where we can, like you said, kind of get our form really, outline. Yeah, get our ducks in a row right. and then we can think that yeah. it's necessary. Yeah. So, I mean, there are. I wrote down just a couple of things that we had talked about would be helpful to have from other places. Um, you know, you mentioned the county plans, like how what their plans are going forward. Um, we talked about whether there's an update to that Library of Virginia piece, the Virginia Directors Group, the information that you had, the Orange Boy survey from last time, which might just give us you know, some ideas and direction. So I think pulling together some of those resources first would be helpful. Um, and I don't know if you mentioned the, the mission and the vision, is it possible, you know, are those things that we want to take forward? Can we have the board already um, reaffirm those things or can the board review those things so that we actually have something in place to start building upon or is, are we not there yet? Um, oh, you mean take it now to the board? Well, I mean, so the mission statement is Pamunkey Regional Library enhances the quality of life in our community by providing free access to information, promoting reading enjoyment, nurturing lifelong learning, and providing places for people to interact. Right. Or is... So, sorry, the National Censor attended the library people oh, responded nice. to the library survey. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that. Oh, look, there you go. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You subconsciously read it. Squirrel. <laughs> you have a good memory. Um, <clears throat> I think I think it would be it would be good to take the mission statement and the vision statement to the board. Um, and I don't know that. The, in, in my opinion, I think we have a very very good mission statement. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. You know, looking at trying to change it, I'm just saying that we certainly ought to open it up to the board. As you know, if if someone has, you know, um, has the feeling that we need to, you're saying that inspiring destinations and compelling experiences is our vision. Okay, is that what you told me? Okay, so we could take these two to the board. Um, you know, we can. Uh, I'll, certainly can preface it in an e email ahead of time that we'd like you to take a look at these. We're, you know, we just want to reaffirm that they, these are our mission statement and our, our vision statement. I think, I mean, the direction that we were headed, you know, sort of prior to, to 20, prior to the pandemic, was that the, I think there was the thought at least there was a number of people who were vocal on the board who were suggesting that that wasn't that wasn't good enough, and they were looking really with the expectation that the boards of supervisors shouldn't be funding the library in a way that the library is able to provide excellent services to the public. That there was no reason it was, uh, it was a Hanover resident particularly, but that there was no reason not to make that expectation with the Board of Supervisors um, instead of, and that's what, I mean, at the time that we completed this, we'd gone through 
seven years, basically, with a budget cut from one locality or the other. And it, you know, it, there were a lot of things going on at that point in time. You know, we're getting budget cuts. We're adapting to that, um, trying to figure that out. We were working to turn our circulation around, which we did. Because, mm -hmm. um, again, the, the survey shows will show you that when people think of the public library, they think about Czech and Africans. That's the first thing that they, they think of. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the data from Foreign Troy, their data showed that every time you contact a customer, um, the most common like customer reaction was that they would come to the library and check something out. You might be sending them information about a program, they didn't necessarily come to the program. Follow their activity. The next thing they do is check out the program. Um, so that's, um, I think that's something that we probably do want to try to reconsider and get a sense. And I'm saying this because we just sent some stuff out with the budget, but um, all three counties are in a different spot. Gucci's doing 5% for their staff of merit, and they have a budget that is spending less money for 25 than they did in 24. King William is doing no merit for their staff and they're trying to hold their budget even. They've got they've got some it's gonna be a challenge with King William and the fire teams. And Hanover's kind of in between. Their budget's growing but they did they did four percent instead of five percent. I think that I mean I think you know how do you how do you have a plan that gets traction into plans of the three counties that are evicting folks in their resources. So I think you might want to spend some time and yeah. have that discussion with your other colleagues yeah, to, s to see um, to see how to, how to do that. Um, I think another piece that would be helpful before moving forward is I know that you give us the um, statistics mm -hmm. um, often. Um, I would like to see like a, a, a more detailed breakdown on those statistics. Like I'm very curious, um, not just library users as a whole, but kind of what our breakdown is among ju juvenile to adult, for example, or within the different collections. Um, I'd also be curious, I know we did this at one point, the whole digital side, like what is our, our digital um, checkouts um, and does that change if you have um, a juvenile collection? You know, or is it maybe, I don't know, one fourth digital juvenile, but maybe half adult or whatever, whatever the differences are between those, just to see kind of what the trends are. Um, and I, I would like to know just where our resources go as well in comparison. So, um, you know, if we're spending two thirds of our budget on materials for digital things, but it's only a third of our actual, um, so I would just like to kind of see that kind of information just to help us um, look at trends and going forward. So I don't know if it's possible to get some more specific. It is possible. Um, I mean, can I ask you to put that, your breakdown into writing so yeah. that we can, I mean, I wasn't taking this no, for what fine. you said. Well, that was, that's my job. That's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, but yes, I think all of, I think all of those are, are possible. I think it's going to take some time. Um, there are other things happening with our staff. We're in the process of moving two different branches in the next couple of months. It's evaluation time. Every staff member is getting an evaluation written over the next few months. We're trying to work on policies. Um, so I would ask that we have maybe a realistic timeline for some of that. And one of the questions that I was gonna ask is, I mean, maybe in terms of the timeline on this planning piece is, what is your expectation for having something completed? By my wish 
not expectation, but my wish is that it would, that by this time next year, we could have a, a plan. My expectations are probably by next year or 18 months from now, you know, that we would have a, have a plan together. Um, I, I know it's a lot of work. I, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. It's not, um, you know, this isn't that, oh, well, let me just check these three things off and I'll be done. You know, it's just, it, it is going to take a lot of work. And in the middle of all of this, we're trying to do the review of the policies, which I absolutely think we've got to continue. You know, we can't, can't what, drop that, so. What was the cost involved with getting Orange Boy involved in the, pro producing the, rich, the uh, last one? Rough idea. Really generous. I think. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if we were sort of onboarding with them. Um, my sense would be that it was probably between um, fifteen and twenty thousand. Good number of customers who do not who request not to be. Do, but we have some. I mean, there's some people that we have some. That, uh, a good, I mean, a good number. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What if we were to create our own survey and just blast it out to those people and then make it available on county websites? Is that doable? I think. I mean, you can do that. Are you going to have them? What is your survey tool? Where is that going to be based? I don't know. I don't know how that works. Just um, I know the county has thrown out dumb surveys, like um, yeah. the Survey Monkey or what. I mean, something. I don't know. And we're not. And we don't have a, a subscription to Survey Monkey. We're not familiar with that as a tool. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I think you might want to consider at least getting some pricing from Orange Boy. Yes, I think so too. Yeah. For, for, I mean, they are working with libraries across the country, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think we add some value to it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what the costs are doing it ourselves, but I, would, I don't, I don't look forward to the idea that staff are trying to mm -hmm. compile something mm -hmm. on the back. Don't, no need to reinvent the wheel again. The tool might have a lot more capability to analyze those results that the monkey, I mean, that the uh, survey monkey would not have. Yeah. I agree. That's what they do all day, every day. Yeah. I was just looking at the website. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Is there a way that we could um, chat with Orange Boy? Um, you know, as a committee? Could we? Okay. Let me see that. I'd like to see their material first that they did last time. Can we sort of or organize our thoughts about how to approach That's what I'm them? thinking. Not not the next meeting, right. but maybe the following meeting, you know, the two meetings from now. If we can next time, you know, take a look at, uh, at the mm -hmm. former why, survey. Why don't we cross that bridge after you've seen it? Here's, the, here's an orange, it's called orange.studio. The studio is an agency housed within Orange Boy. Under the agency principle, we provide support, but our clients do not have the time or staff to analyze data, create reports, update strategic plans, send customer surveys, or evaluate performance. We are the library's data partner and can offer you as much or little support as you need. So I guess that is what we're looking for. Obviously. And I will be very honest, I, you know, they, there were some of the reports, one that I printed out um, that had been done by the one that was up in the Fredericksburg Rappahannock. Mm -hmm. um, I was under impressed with their <laughs> Me too, I was under impressed. <laughs> I, I thought, you know, it, it sounded like some company came in and, and did this and made the, and I, I just was not, I didn't think their plan sounded like a real plan for them. It may have been a plan for somebody, but it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily theirs. Um, 
you know, so I'm not sure I want us to turn over having Orange Boy do our, our entire plan for us, but I would love to see them help us with the survey. Yeah, they could gather data. Yeah, yeah. Are we, are we meeting monthly? At least monthly, I would think. At least? <laughs> Daily. I'm not going home and tell my husband that. <laughs> the, um, Do you have extra rooms in your house? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think we need to meet monthly. Okay. You know, we start out with yeah. monthly, and if we get into a uh, you know point where we're working with the survey and we need to meet twice in one month or something, but I think monthly, yes. So are we going to look at the third Wednesday? Just that's because that's where we are now. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, I think that would be good. Wednesday is a good day for me. Yeah, Wednesdays I think would work for me too. I think, on Wednesday in fact, we were, we were talking about July, we don't have a board meeting. Is that correct? You have not decided what your meeting schedule will be for the next fiscal year. But well, usually we one of those, July yeah. or August. August. And I think we yeah, decided last year July we, because we August it. starts, I mean, yeah. school starts in August, so. Um, so um, you asked um, Mrs. Young what her wish or expectation was, and she said 12 months to 18 months. Do you think that's a realistic? I do think that that's a realistic expectation. Okay. I just wanted but to I do that. think that <laughs> I do think that if you want to be talking to people, meaning trying to um, I mean, so broaden the scope of the info that you're getting, you probably are looking more at the 18, 18 than the 12. Yeah. I, th I think it's a good goal mm -hmm. that you try to contact more people, have more outreach that way. Going to be less, <laughs> right, Bob? But um, setting that up will be um, will take a while. So we do our board meetings fourth Wednesday. So if we did the third Wednesday for this meeting, I think that would would, would that work for you all? Can you all part of this team, please. <laughs> that would work. Do same time. Pardon? You do same time. Yeah, I think we could do the. The same time mm -hmm. as opposed to morning. Does anybody have a preference? Would you rather morning? morning? <laughs> well, <laughs> you want it to be I'm, morning, so. I'm, I'm looking in my mind at the lengthy list of additional reporting that you're asking to have done two days after this meeting. So, having basically a day where I'm going to be involved with long range planning is also so it would be better to put more time between the two. Well, I don't, I, I, I don't know how you do that, but I would. I guess I'm asking that you recognize the workload that's being assigned. So. Wednesdays work for me. Anyway. So we're looking at second Wednesday? Is that what you just said? Okay, so you're saying put more time in between our board meeting and this meeting, is what you're saying. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm saying. Asking, I'm, please. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, that there's, okay. I mean, there's. And that's fine. I would be fine with that. I don't, I don't know that the last report that I sent really addressed all of the questions that you were asking yeah. to be reported on, but that takes a significant amount of time and, and other staff that are involved with trying to do that. And, um, okay. We have, I mean, I'm guessing we're going to have sort of other policy sessions. Finance yep. committee would meet. We meet the finance committee regular meeting. Every other month. Every other month at this point. But the next one is for the seventh of May. Mm -hmm. Is that like the first? It's at the two. two it's at on that's, Tuesday. That's on a Tuesday. Oh, at so it's 2 not like a specific thing. Yeah. Okay. I think the well, it is a Tuesday. It's the going to be the repeating off of a Tuesday schedule. Yeah, on the Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Every other month will be the. It would be first Tuesday, it looks like. So, today's 
Wednesday, April 17th. So the next one we're saying would be the second Wednesday would put us at May 8th, which is, is right, after, after. right after finance committee meeting, which the day after. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be better to be the day after finance and then week before the board meeting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that matters. But it, do we want to do it in the morning? Do you all have a preference of morning or afternoon? Would you prefer morning? I know the Fish and Friends usually has a morning, so they do. I mean, I'm just trying to, but they're not on a second Wednesday. Yeah, it's a quarterly discussion. <coughs> do they meet quarterly? They do. The board, yeah, meets quarterly. That's from this morning. Afternoon's probably for me at least better in case I get called to do a story time, which usually happens. <laughs> so why don't we? Is, is that after, does afternoon work okay for you? Perfecto. <laughs> there you go. So are we are we looking at let's Wednesday, do the, May yeah, the, 8th? Do the second. Let's start out. We'll do the second Wednesday of the month, Good. and we'll do it from one. To do you three. have a preference for where to meet? This right now with this core committee, this area, you know, either Ashland or here or Ashland is available. Or, okay. yeah, Ashland's good. Yeah, that is that perfect. Good. Yeah. I like this one. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, and, but w should we say that we're going to skip July altogether? Because we're gonna, because we're thinking of skipping board meeting in July, or or no. Uh, the only reason I worry about skipping in well, I tell you what, when we get closer, let's see if we can skip Good July. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I just, I, you know, there's going to be, like I said, this is going to have a lot of work with it, I think, so. Okay. And then June, so the next two meetings are May 8th and June 12th. From one to three? Yeah. Put it down from one to three. Okay. Does that and work okay for you? Are we booking Ashland for both days? I think it's um, the other way. Yeah. The finance committee is at Atley. I can look for Atley. Oh, this is, I said Ashland for this. Ashland is next time. It's next time. Oh, so. And then. Is that what you're asking? Book them. The, the finance and this one? Not finance. Oh. I'm just I'm looking at the twelfth of June. Oh. I'm just wondering if you wanna what is what would is there any possibility of regional? Is that how does that work for you all? From the shetty and a flashlight. <laughs> I don't know if regional's available. <laughs> so I'm just trying to see if we can have some actionable Items. So I mean, I'm yes, I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. So I'll wait. No, you go ahead. I'm, I'm fine with that. But uh, yes, I agree with you. I was thinking the exact same thing. No, I'll, I'll wait. You're the chair person. No, you go ahead. Actually, I'm trying. To well, we're we're, we're kind of doing it together. Oh, okay. okay. Kind of co-chair this so that that's not. Yeah, it's not doesn't fall on Barb's shoulder. Okay. So what? Okay. So what should we? What's our homework What's our home? for May 8th? I would like for us to take a look. First of all, I think everyone needs to take a look at the Library of Virginia planning, planning for excellence, if we can get hold of that, and which we can. And, um, okay, who's and then, Tom, you said you got the plans for the, the three divisions. I think that would be another key piece that we the, need to the, look at. Plans from the localities. Localities, yeah. Um, yeah. What I tried to find today was something that would have sort of their mission and goals, and I did use the print prints of them. Um, and are you talking about King William Goochland in Hanover? Is that yeah? Yes. Okay. 
So those three, so let's just have, can we just have those two items be our, we're going to look at the, um, be familiar with the Library of Virginia Planning for Excellence, and then we'll get the, um, are these them? Well, these them? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still a printed reader. One of the things that I would, I mean, they don't all do it the same way. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, trying, trying to figure out wh where they have what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, Goochland's had, had that. Goochland also has a, what, 25 year long range plan. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm guessing that they have sort of vision, mission, Goals that would what be are similar. These, what are these missions of the county or the? Yes. Of just the, would it, the county, county itself? Government. County government. County government. Would county it be government worth, missions. Would it be uh, worth us contacting? Yes. County our county governments. I mean, obviously that doesn't work with Queen Marine. We would need to engage with them. But I mean, I would be happy to reach out to Hanover. And, I and think just we should, say, yes. you know, and we do, are there any well, documents either even about how the library... How do you want us to fit into your plan, yeah. I think is yeah. sort of the question. So contacting our local, yes, I think that's a good idea. And I think that that's one of those groups when we start doing focus groups or we start doing interviews or we, uh, whatever, uh, county boards of supervisors should be one of those groups. What are we asking them now? So as far as their comprehensive plan, where the library fits, fits into in, the bigger picture, yeah. do they? Kind of how I would you know, start what do they that. see happening with the library in the next five years? Well, I think they all have they all have um, objectives that they're trying to meet: mm -hmm. serving older people, serving children, quality of life. Um, they're all looking at them slightly. same as their language, it will make it easier for them to say, oh, we do that too. Um, but, you know, we probably don't want to say, well, we serve older citizens, we serve senior citizens, you know, like, we don't want to repeat each one of the three of them, we need to have sort of a you know, shared language on, on, on meeting those, assuming that that's something that Okay, let me ask you two. Do you, would you like for me to see if we can get one of the um, King William trustees to be part of the our committee, our, our core committee? I think it might might behoove us to have them on this committee too. And I was thinking, Janet, you know, when I think the three of us could meet with the supervisors together, if you you know, um, and Kelly, maybe we can get you to meet with the Hanover folks with them and then we'll figure out with King, King William once we get, you know, I can certainly contact both John and Mary and see which one of them. Well, Mary, I don't know, Mary's in the same situation as me. She, this is in her fourth year and I'm assuming they'll. Mary's still probably a better fit in Jackson <coughs> than John. I'm thinking so too. Kind of yeah. Great. We expect refreshments. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> we just talked about refreshments this morning. So. I could talk about we could talk refreshments. I was going to say, yes. So, okay. Refreshments are, are encouraged. And do we want to look at July or do we go to spring or winter? You want to go ahead and look at scheduling one for July and then we can, you know, change it if, if we decide it's not going to. Okay. This so. doesn't hurt. Yeah. The more we can be scheduled ahead of time, the better. Okay, that would be July the 10th.
you know, you can come back here, or do you is to go to um, Atlee? Do you want us to try to do Atlee one time, or it's up to you? We do Atlee for a lot of meetings, but it's for you. We can see Montpelier. Oh, let's go to Montpelier. Could you? We can do the camera. Because I would we don't wait and maybe do um, Montpelier oh, after July. Yeah, because yeah, so they're going to be just moving at that Final point. completion is supposed to be at the end of June. Okay. Could do, maybe do Hanover. That's, uh, you know, one that I've we don't ever get to go to. No. It, has, it has very limited seating if you have members of the public. I don't know. Where is it? I've never been. The courthouse it's across, oh, across, across the street from yeah. Hanover Town. Oh. Let's oh, do yeah, Hanover. Is it available? Like it is like far it. from you guys, though. To go up there. It, it's like like ten we're miles close to Pardon? Maybe we could have lunch at the Hanover Town. We could get East Melbourne from the library branch. Well, that's true. <laughs> Called the Hanover Library? Yeah. Hanover Branch oh, Library. Hanover Branch. Hanover Branch Library. And that's July? And yeah, we, we don't go there because it's too small? Is that the reason? That's why we don't do it now for board meetings, is it just doesn't have any room for the citizens to come. Okay, good. Many citizens are here. Yeah, where's the Grand Trunk? Where are you doing that, Jim? Goochland. Goochland. Ashland, Goochland, Hanover. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. And so we're clear on what we're doing. Look at the Library of Virginia planning for excellence. Now, um, and we will take, I will take the, um, the mission, the vision and mission statements to the board this evening. And we'll make that one of the items on the, uh, for discussion and possible revision. And then contact your local board of supervisors to get their input as to where the library fits in, what are their object objectives for libraries, the library in their localities. Um, and we haven't really cared where it fits into the bigger picture. Yeah, so I mean, they all have comprehensive plans. Yeah. yeah. Plans fit into their plans. So you all contact Hanover. We'll contact Goochland. And I will contact and Mary and John see that. can yeah. contact King William, okay? All right, so that's that's our goal for next time to come back with. So we're looking, we're familiarizing ourselves with this, the planning for excellence. I just wonder, do you want to, to what pull end? in what Mr. Shuckley mentioned about the Virginia Library Directors? Yes, yes, it might that. be good that's to great. look yeah. at those two together, especially since it was like a ranking system. It'd be good to right. see what the different areas are. So do you? Have that readily available in the PDF form? I think so. Okay. Excellent. The other thing is, do we want to go ahead and start making the contact with Orange Boy, see if we can get um, maybe I'll contact him. an estimate okay, of what that might be to... I mean, I mean to contact him for the survey and scan gotcha. at this Great. point in time. Good. Could they still have the data, like you said, and the implement itself? Okay, so do you want, we need to send out two PDFs to everybody in this group, um, the Virginia Library Director's PDF and the Library of Virginia Planning for Excellence. Who's going to do that? Mr. Chuckley, were you going to check to see if there was a more updated? I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's let let so me do that because if, if there is like a 2024 or whatever, let's work on the newest stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, Tom, you'll send that out to everyone so they can get started on their homework. And then um, contact your local board of supervisors and come back with answers. And hopefully, you'll have some input by May 8th. Yeah. All right.
right. So we know what we have to do for next time. And um, I think there was something else I was going to say. I don't know. I'll think of it another week. Sure. Taking so, the mission and vision statement to the board yes, and, and contacting them. Got those two down for me. Okay. And Mr. Shepard contacts them as well. So those are like the action steps. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good, everyone. Thank here. you. Good. And Janet, do you want to kind of touch base here? I mean, if you'd like to carpool every time, we'll, we'll try to do that. Yeah, I just want to say. Do you live in Goopsland? I do. I live in the western part of Goopsland, yeah. Whereabouts? Sharon Hill, off of Sharon Hill Road, off oh, wow. Road. Oh my gosh, you're way out there. You are way out there, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's a beautiful area out there. But I'll be coming from the branch anyways. To she the takes meetings. a hike when she has to go to Wells Point. <laughs> I do. <laughs> what, two hours? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. An hour and a half at least. That's if I'm moving right along. <laughs> no stops. Well, what we can do, we can maybe just stop by the library at some point and we can figure out when we can you know, we, I can contact the, um, our supervisors and see if we can set up a meeting with a couple of our supervisors that we can sit down with them. Okay. And uh, then I'll get back with you two on the, you know, calendar dates. Well, also, we could send out a, um, just yeah. blast all five of them and get their, you know, responses. Yeah, we could do that. And then... Can, can I just sort of clarify? Because I think they may... I think you may get some questions back about like what do you mean. What I'm trying to say is everybody works on long range plans at the yeah. county yeah. level. Yeah. And what I was suggesting was that Refurbish. the library needs to take that out of the plans. I don't think it's bad that you're asking them for feedback as sort of how they see that happening. It might give you like in addition, it might give you some opportunity to talk about Second branch, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but I just wanted to sort of clarify. I think, I mean, they're working on these much more than we are, and I think if you say, well, you know, what is your plan? They're probably going to say, well, should, you know, I, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, I mean, they all have it. Is what I'm yeah. just trying to say. So, the but the conversation should be should be interesting. So curious to see what they have to say. Yeah. And like you said, goals. using some of the same wording that they use for. And then if you all will work with Kelly on the Hanover group, then we can get that meeting set up. Okay. And I will send you an agenda for next week by tomorrow. Yes. I've got, I've got parts and pieces. We're in Ashland next week. Where are we next week? Yes. Is um. Wednesday, May, April, sorry, April 24th, April 24th is at Ashland. Ashland.